In this part of the custom homemade mini bike build series, we're going to get this far. But it's not just about getting this far with this build, it's all of the little details and all of the little parts that you can use for so many different mini bike builds. Now in part one, you saw how to make the frame jig. In part two, you saw how to build the frame. And today we're going to be focusing on all the little metal parts so that you can assemble a mini bike. Bank, we're going to be taking a look at one example of a seat of many. There are going to be more build videos showing more examples, different engines, different engine sizes, different ways that you can customize the forks, etc. But we're going to be focusing on this for this build and the plates and getting things prepped and ready to go. And last four through, the tube just comes down to the side of the cup. Ooh, air filter. What a day, what a day. Might as well just give it a... Parts you build and parts you buy. We're going to be working from the back, moving forward, showing you the construction. It's actually taking a step back from part two of the build series. Step two, we actually had the axle tabs tack welded onto the frame. This is going to go a little bit more detail. So people have been asking me, hey, what have you been using for tools? Are you just printing everything out on a plasma cutter? Because I don't have a CNC plasma cutter. Well, I'm actually using hand tools a lot more than you may think. Because this is a homemade mini bike, I will commit to getting the plans up online, me going fast, or check the description below. Please give me a little bit of time from when this video comes out because I'm still fine tuning things a little bit. Because you may be able to see with some of these parts, I may print them out on a plasma cutter, but then I'm gonna come back in with the grinder and cut off the parts and fine tune them, then update the plans for the plasma cutter and uh, the files that you can print off and trace the lines. I start with an engine plate. I just take a piece of quarter inch steel. I take my angle grinder with a cutting disc on it and I cut something to size. I come back, I do my measurements with the engine and I make my marking with the cobalt drill bits. If I want to do a slide such as this where I have adjustable, I come in with a tungsten carbide high speed rotary drill bit. It goes really fast sharp metal shavings everywhere. Make sure you've got some eye protection. I do have some parts I'm going to be showing you later that are just custom, just for me. I did make this on the CNC table. I did buy this, so there are equivalents. If I made it and it's not something you could do easily at home, I will show you alternatives that you can actually just buy yourself. The axle tabs evolved over time. You can make easy axle tabs that do not have chain adjusters. The parts that you see in this video are for examples, really. I put together so many different examples, like how to do necks. I show how to do two different necks coming up. I show a bunch of different examples, how to do chain tension, how to do it from the jack shaft, etc. So you have ideas of putting together a custom homemade mini bike. Whether you do this build or another one, hopefully you get a lot of ideas and great show. Here we go. We'll be taking a look at the brake hangers and making that little bend in there. Axles, straight up, this is from the Mega Moto Pro. Uh, you can pick these 12 millimeter bolts up pretty easily. I'm going with the front uh, 12 millimeter bolt from the Mega Moto Pro. It just has the threads in a little bit shorter. We have some chain tensioners. I'm going with blue anodized aluminum here. For this particular build, a future build is going to be using the red ones. So you can go ahead and check that out. So we have the axle in place. We have our brake hangers, we have our axle tabs, we have our chain adjusters in there, and we're going to need two spacers. One of the spacers measures at 0.3 inches, the other measures at 0.55 inches. My axle tab, I need to bend out these frame adjustments here on the side to 90 degrees. And I'm going to be using a vise to do that. Now when I put it in the vise, I'm going to be putting it flush up to the edge of the axle tabs, for 45 degrees of the bend or half the bend. And then I'm gonna move it about a millimeter down and finish up the bend. Once I get some weight on it at about here, I'm gonna lo loosen up that bench vise just a little bit. And there we have axle tabs with our chain adjusters ready to go in place. So while I'm doing the axle tabs, I'm gonna take two sliding brake brackets, even though I only need one, and I'm gonna be bending them to a 90 degree angle for where they slide. I'm gonna be bending this the same way I did with the axle tab. Now where I cut is just a little bit below the surface of the edge. I'm gonna bend that about 45 degrees and then I'm gonna pop it up even half a millimeter. I'm gonna start the bend, loosen it up and bend all the way to 90 degrees. So I'm gonna use a cutting wheel and I'm gonna go straight across here. 
Uh, this is the to the edge on the side here, and I'm going to be bending this up. When I have two of them, I want to make sure that they are opposite of one another because they'll be going on opposing sides of the mini bike. Now with the cut in here, I didn't even go halfway through, but I do need that little bit of a cut to help me bend this in place. Now make sure you do your bend very slowly from here because you do not want to break that tab off. Once you've gotten this tab to 90 degrees, you're gonna come back in here and fill weld this in. So it can sometimes be hard to find parts that work and they're easily available time and time again. The hub that I'm gonna be using is the same hub used for the Megamoto Pro, the Megamoto Max, and the Coleman RB200. So it's gonna be uh, available from multiple locations. On here, this is a Carlisle. Uh, this is just like a, a farmer implement tractor. Um, tire, not, nothing really too special about it. I've made a custom 45 tooth sprocket that I'm gonna be putting on there and then just the standard Coleman RB200 or Megamoto brake. With the large engine build, we are gonna be requiring a jack shaft and a fourth bearing support for that jack shaft. The reason for it is the engine sticks out quite a bit. Even though we're gonna be going with the torque converter here, the CVT, continuously variable transmission, in this particular build, you can switch things up to a clutch. Now this is a standard drum clutch that you can see on these larger block engines, or you can switch up to a four disc race clutch really build this engine out, go for drag or another particular build. Very customizable, very custom build. You can definitely modify this to your heart's content. With the jack shaft setup, I'm gonna be starting with the jack shaft tabs. Now with these jack shafts, I'm using 6003 2RS flanged bearings. We take a close look up at one of these guys here. It's got a nice little lip on there. It should seat properly, but these bearings have to actually be very snug and in place. So the holes that are cut for the jack shaft tabs, they're gonna be a little bit smaller, and I will very slowly, with a tungsten carbide rotary bit, I will very slowly open up this hole until these just barely seat in there, and then I'm gonna tap them in lightly with the hammer. It's important to have these slightly in there and align, not all the way punched in, but just enough in there where you can put an axle, a, a jack shaft axle, through there to do your alignment. Make sure that these two tabs are properly aligned with one another once they get tack welded into place. Now for the jack shaft axle itself, I'm using a three quarter inch keyed length of rod and it's cut to 15 inches in length. This 15 inch length bar is gonna help me between the two bearings to align the jack shaft tabs themselves. Tabs from the base of the engine plate are gonna measure at 3 eighths of an inch in and you're gonna to have to use something pretty flat to be able to get in there to measure that they're 3 eighths of an inch. Now, if your engine plate is not aligned properly to what it would be as if it were sitting in the frame jig measured from the back forward, you will have to put this back into the frame jig, measure and make sure that these two are aligned. The reason for it is your biggest concern is not aligning it to the engine plate, your biggest concern is, engine, is aligning it to your axles and your axle tabs. Two and five sixteenths inches in from the edge of the tube, coming right here to the edge of, of the axle tab itself. You're gonna be doing that on both sides and that should give you a good alignment to be able to tack weld those two on there, make sure everything is nice and clean. So now back at our four bearing support, we're gonna actually have to make the uprights and this is gonna be taking two of our side pieces and then we're gonna be welding those in place here and we'll be coming back and our shifting plates will be here for helping with alignment. Now, if you notice, there's a lot of capability for alignment here, back and forth. And then over here where the shifting plates are actually attaching to the frame, we'll be able to slide this a little bit left and right just to make sure that we have a good alignment. This will also give us the ability to disassemble this in different pieces, different sections and easily take the four bearing support off. Ignoring a bit of the mess, but if you will notice, I do have more engines that are gonna be coming on for future builds. If you wanna check out the following builds in this build series, you'll see that I can take the same frame and use the same frame 
without the four bearing support, easily swap to a different engine, swap to something with a torque converter. I've got one set up over here, uh, electrical system that I've got this one on for a start. Uh, Going to be using a full electric setup in one of my builds. And you'll see that I just take off the four bearing support, swap the engine out. There isn't much to it. I can swap so many different parts to get a nice custom mini bike. Now we've got our uprights. We're gonna bolt all of the parts onto them, make sure that everything's aligned, and then weld them right on up. Now I have everything lined up, but all of the bolts themselves have not been tightened down all the way. They haven't been secured in place. And I'm really just kind of eyeballing it and shifting it out to where those uh, cross pattern holes line up on the bottom, making sure that I'm using the axle the jack shaft axle to line everything up and then I'm gonna tack weld those base plates into position. Making sure everything is in the jig, I've actually propped up this side over here by three quarters of an inch to match where it's gonna be propped up over here because I've got a bolt head and then two quarter inch plates that are gonna be kind of pushing the, the frame up a little bit. I've got it snug and resting on the backs but the front is actually gonna be loose and then I'm gonna be tacking on these two plates Right here, lining up this back corner, the rear corner. They're gonna be coming off of the edge of the, the frame a little bit there. If I want, I can go back, grind that down flush. Hmm. So now it's time to actually put the engine on here, make sure everything's lined up, make sure that I've got my tack welds where they need to be. Talking about the engine plate really quick, you can see that there are slides for adjustable uh, adjustability for when you're using a large block because the large block is going to give uh, need adjustments and tension from the jack shaft. So it's going to be able to be uh, tensioned properly for chain or with a belt. We've got different belt sizes here. This belt is going to be a 3785 and that's going to need, I believe it's what is it, 3 16 8 and 3 16 or 8 and 3 8 one or the other, from center point to center point. So that is important to make sure that the belt is not too tight. So there is adjustability on the plate. When you're using a chain and the chain stretches, you can actually put some more tension on there by sliding the engine forward. There is just enough clearance in this design where you can see here the stock tank for a 440. This is the 440 18 horsepower with the stock air filter and air box. So I'm gonna be running over 20 horsepower, mad torque on this thing, absolute monster of a mini bike. You can see that there is good clearance. I do switch out the stock gas cap, so I will show you that a little bit later on. This is just the normal size gas cap you get off of a 212 or a clone. This is where we're gonna be moving into the front. I'm gonna jump in here really quick for two things. One, the Cannon Go Kart. <laughs> that so many people I actually made friends off of. I know the video didn't take off. It's one of my least viewed. It has been cannibalized. I've got some pretty cool upcoming builds. Show you how to make some other things with the go-kart parts. And I also want to give shout outs to some pretty cool people out there. Um, I've actually gotten quite a few people interested in sponsoring the channel. I've not made anything official yet because of many reasons, but I have a lot of interest partnering with a lot of people right now. I want to give a huge shout out, huge appreciation. Thank you for the interest. I'm getting a lot of traction with this channel right now. And I just want to say thank you everybody very much. I've got people sharing the videos. I've got people giving me positive feedback. Um, online and communities. I'm pretty active. I try to stay pretty active, help people out there as well. And you guys are great. Thank you very much. Now on to the front end of the custom homemade mini bike. 
So in part two of this custom mini bike build series, I went over the necks, the neck sizes, the neck length, but I didn't really go over the tools so much uh, other than the size. This is a 7 8 inch bit. This FR6Z flanged bearing. And then I have a bearing set for the ones carved out to 30 millimeter. And I used this lovely step drill bit right here. And this is seated just a little bit deep in there. 30 millimeter. This is a 28 millimeter bearing set, which is used commonly on mopeds or scooters. So it is highly available as well. I tried to source highly available parts. The bearing kits, the, the bearing races, you can get those on eBay. The front forks that I'm using are the TD Pro 33 millimeter front forks. I actually made a custom front disc off of eBay. I got this one for about $20 a 190 millimeter front disc brake. I was able to fit to the 57 millimeter hole size and that's center to center on the mounting holes. This caliper is a very common size. So this is a moped tire, a moped wheel. The rim does not fit 12 millimeter. Mopeds are that 10 millimeter or 15 millimeter or 3 eighths. So what I had to do was find a 12 millimeter outer diameter, 10 millimeter inner diameter, and sleeve the whole axle coming down, and then find an additional sleeve to just make sure that everything was snug between the two forks itself. It has some high speed bearings in there. So let's talk about this triple tree now. The triple tree is also commonly able to be purchased with these pit bike forks. They actually come with the risers as well for the handlebars, and I had a few different options for 7 8 inch handlebars and I went with the Z-bars. Kill switch, I'm going to need that kill switch as well. And then I got the uh, the actual lever for the throttle control and I slid the aluminum handle grips over the top of that. So I'm just bypassed a couple of things. Didn't even tell you about the jack shaft. You need a chain, you need a sprocket, you need to have your keepers. And I went right past the foot peg and the kickstands. Well, both of these are going to have to have a little part welded on them. So I did bypass them and we'll be coming back once we're putting our finishing touches on the mini bike. Bink, so time to get this on our mini bike and I'll have a roller. Now having a roller would be really nice. It would allow me to get comfortable on the mini bike, find a position to put my foot pegs in, find the position to put my kickstand on, but there's only one big problem. I need a seat. Now I have a few different options to go with, but for this particular build, I'm going with a Springer seat. A small Springer seat is nice, wide, it will give me a little bit of a suspension. I have a couple different springs to choose from, should be able to have me lower or raise the seat depending on how aggressive of a high back I want it. In order to get the Springer seat in place, I'm going to actually have to put a couple of mounts and I'm using a high grade steel bolt, like so, and it's going to be coming up here 10 inches high. So I've got another part that I'm going to add to my frame jig, which is really just a block that measures 10 inches up. Because I've got a resting in the frame jig and I've got it jacked up three quarters inch in the front and three quarters an inch because of the forbearing support, I'm going to add three quarters of an inch to my 10 inches and get 10 and three quarter inches. And this is what I'm going to rest the bolts on. The bolt head itself, I actually shaved down to be able to match the frame so it's fitting nice and flush against the frame when I weld it in. Now I just need to align them, make sure that everything is straight, and then weld them around. So I've got my welds in place, and I'm going to be taking a measurement of 7 inches from those bolts. 7 inches on this side. I'm going to mark that right there. Once I've got my marks in place, I've got another plate now it has got a single hole in it, and that's going to be up where the Springer seat mounts in. So I'm just going to tack this in place. All right, I feel I have it centered on there, and I'm just kind of eyeballing where it's going to be centered. Let's give that a couple tacks. Now on the back side of the Springer seat, I made another plate that uh, should have some plans for. It's going to be adjustable, be able to slide up and down, and that is going to have a rod coming through it. The seat base now in place, I have a 5 16 inch by 18 bolt that's just holding the top of that seat in place. It's going to be adjustable through the midsection here. The shocks are in place, I'm going to be cutting those bolts down. This base plate here comes uh, a template that I can try and get up as well. You can see I tack welded a quarter inch thick 
piece of steel to it. And then I've got a one half inch 16 gauge round on there. And I believe that is six and one eighth inch in length. Then I grabbed a 5 16 inch uh, rod, just a metal rod, solid metal rod. I grabbed a die that is a 5 16 at NC18, so an 18 thread, and I just threaded the ends both sides of that, and then I'm going to be able to push it all the way through and get my seat in place. Got my seat in place, just need to trim up those nuts. I'm going to try and find my metal engraver there, and I made a nice little place that I can try and engrave. The light went out! No! In the upcoming videos, we're going to be... Oh! Ah, it was just a clutch. I don't, I got so many of those. In the upcoming video, we're going to be adding different engines, swapping things around, showing how actually modular and how many different builds you can do with this one frame, this one mini bike. But that's not all. We're actually going to finish this mini bike up. So everything has been tack welded at this point. We have to weld this up, but there's going to be two more things to weld on. One, you need a kickstand. And at this point, now we can size everything up where we want our kickstand. And two, we're going to actually have to size up where we want our foot pegs. Do we want the foot pegs on the back for a more aggressive stand? Or do you want to move them over to the front right over? Wait, still so much that we can do. I'm going to add a little bit of a custom flare to it as well, some of the body work, some of the gussets, but that's not really structural. At this point, we got ourselves a roller with an engine just about ready to go. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a great day.